what is going on? Oh yeah, crazy week, wouldn't you have to agree? I mean, this is like a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, it really is. So I figured today would be a great day to sit down with the tried and true fans of the SMC and just talk. I need to just get some things off my chest. I need to tell you about a couple things that are going on. I need your advice, so I get, so get ready to offer up some advice. It's a tough week, guys. Uh, I'm sure that you already know, and if you don't, uh, Evan Rude has decided to cease making Evan Rude G2 engines, E-Tech G2 engines. Now, we'll get into all that in just a little bit and talk all about how I feel about it and, and what I know. And I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. I don't know a whole lot. I don't know a whole lot more than what you can find on the Internet. I don't have a secret uh, information coming in from corporate right now. I'm... I'm I need some information from you guys, so maybe you can even drop a few things if you know some stuff that's not quite out there yet. But we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Evan Rude, what it means to the industry, what it means for me. Where am I? Gonna, where, gonna, where am I going to end up going? Uh, just it's there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of complications with this with this news. But but before we get into that, let's talk about something a lot more exciting, right? So. You know, you've seen me on the Vice Versa. You've seen us on the Freeman doing all the episodes. And I want to thank you guys so much for supporting the channel with the brand new saltwater videos on the Freeman. We have a lot more coming your way. I plan on doing a lot of cool stuff, a lot of crazy adventures around the country, not just here in Florida, but taking that boat over to the Bahamas when the Bahamas open up, taking the boat to Louisiana, possibly even across the Gulf of Mexico to Texas. A lot of cool things, and so I just want to say thank you for supporting it. And if you are in the Florida Keys, the boat is available for charter. That's right, we are chartering the boat out. Sam Malazzo uh, is my captain. We've got a great crew, and, and, uh, and, and you can charter the boat. So if you plan on coming to South Florida, if you plan on coming to the Florida Keys anytime, uh, be sure to click the link in the description down below. Follow Vice Versa Fishing on Instagram and, uh, and, and inquire about the fishing trips because we'll take you out dolphin fishing, deep dropping, sword fishing, pretty much whatever you want to do. And the boat is set up and ready to go. And uh, I would love for you guys to enjoy the Vice Versa. We also have a property there that you can rent. So we're going to drop those links down below in the description and check that out. So that's really cool. The other really cool thing is, speaking of Vice Versa, is... Oh, I'm sure you saw the hat, right? Did you see the hat? Well, check these puppies out. Oh, yes. I just had some hats made. Now, I'm thinking about selling a few of these, so let me know if any of you guys would like a Vice Versa hat. Really cool logo there. Okay, this is a kind of a camo, kind of a shadow ca camo. And right here on the side, I don't know if you can see it real good, but let's do it on this one. Check that out. 76 with an upside down sailfish. You're asking yourself, well, why is the sailfish upside down? That means release. And that's the amount of sailfish we caught to break the Keys record for the most sailfish releases in one day. Second most all-time Atlantic sailfish, by the way. So we did that a couple weeks ago. That was completely crazy. I don't know if you saw the video or even heard about it, but be sure to check it out. We will also drop the link in the description down below for that. The most epic fishing day ever. I, I, th I, I should have just titled the video, The Most Epic Day Fishing Ever ever, ever, exclamation point, but I didn't, but anyways, it's pretty cool. So I've got these hats, so um, let me know what you think of them. I've got the Vice Versa logo right here, and then we also have them with it spelled out. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. For all you guys that drop comments in this video on, on some advice that I have here in a minute, and maybe somebody wants a hat and all the other things going on, uh, if you follow the Vice Versa Instagram page, okay, Vice Versa Fishing on Instagram, and uh, drop a comment down below, of course, I will pick someone to win a hat. So, and speaking of winners, we have that real quick. Let me jump into that real fast before. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know your time is valuable, so thank you so much for hanging with me. But real quick, we did a video the other day where I did the top three baits for big fish. We did jigs and some Guggen baits and all kind of cool stuff. And I have five winners. We're going to pick 10 winners. But today, we're going to announce the five winners. I'm also going to announce them on my Instagram here as soon as I get done with this. And we're also going to announce it on the YouTube community page on my channel. So if you hear your name right now, go to the YouTube community tab and you will see the post where I announce your name and just message me back. Let me know how to get a hold of you and we can send you the free lures, Guggen baits, Guggen jigs, all kind of really cool stuff. So Christopher Pitts is winner number one, DR411. Blake Diaz, Blake Diaz, winner number three, Brent Asbel, Asbel, I'm so sorry I butchered your name. I think it's Asbel, Brent Asbel, and Sam St. I don't know if that's Sam Street, Sam St. Okay, 
those are your first five winners on all the Guggenbait stuff that we had in the previous video. And uh, enjoy. Enjoy that. Hopefully you guys catch a lot of fish and be sure to tag myself as well as Guggenbaits on anything that you do there. So guys, drop a comment down below if you would like one of these cool hats as well as be sure to tag us on any of your Team SMC stuff as well as any of the Guggenbait stuff that you guys happen to put on the internet. Be sure to tag me in that as well. So that's pretty cool there. You can get your choice. Now, check this out. Oh, yes. Tuesday at 12 o'clock. You know what that means? New signature merch drop. We're bringing the camo back. We did this a few drops ago, and we sold out of them in just a few minutes. We don't have a crazy supply of them, but we've got a bigger supply than we had. So we're going to do a 24-hour sale on Tuesday at 12 o'clock. We're going to have this hat exclusive as well as a couple more. And the great thing about these signature merch drops, if you guys want an autograph on it, all you got to do is drop a comment in the order that you make and let me know how to make it out. So we had a lot of good success with that not too long ago. So thank you for all the support. And we'll drop a link in the channel for that. Right now, there's nothing in the store because it's just as it drops. So at 12 o'clock, the site will go live with all of the merch that we're going to have for that day. But be sure to bookmark it or save the link. Okay, so enough of that, enough of that, enough of that. Uh, Evan Reed, we're coming. I promise, I promise. Uh, a couple more housekeeping needs real quick. Bassmaster open. We need co-anglers, guys. With all this COVID-19 thing happening and the schedule's getting pushed back and, you know, it's kind of disrupted everyone's life. Uh, so we need co-anglers. So I encourage you to check out Bassmaster.com. Uh, sign up for the first open that we've got coming up in two weeks at Muskogee, Oklahoma. I'm going to be there. Would love for you guys to fish as a co-angler in that event. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've been talking to a few guys out there. They say the fishing is pretty good. So if you really just want to get out of the house and get away from all the craziness going on in the world, get a hold of Bassmaster.com. Sign up as a co-angler uh, for those events as well as the rest of them. we got a really cool schedule ahead of us. They really need some co's. So also last, Hillary's on Fish Brain. That's right, Hillary. Martin is on Fish Brain, the real Hillary Sue. She just started her account. She's up to a couple hundred followers. So guys, we're gonna drop a link in the description down below for Fish Brain. Uh, we're up to 280,000 people, by the way, on Fish Brain. So thank you very much. I'm on there all the time. I actually love the platform. It's a lot of fun, but Hillary is now on the channel. So now I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's all the housekeeping needs. Now we're getting back to the somber mode. Okay, Evan Rude. What does it mean? What's going on? Well, guys, you know, I've had a lot of y'all messaging me um, wanting me to do a video like this. And so, again, first of all, I, I don't, I'm not speaking for the company. Uh, I don't know anything factual. This is all a purely a, an opinion at this point. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what I do know and what I've read. Okay, so don't hold me to the fire on anything. Uh, uh, this is not an official statement by any means from Evanrood or BRP in any way. Uh, I've been with Evanrude my entire career. Uh, I started with them 20 years ago, guys, and uh, it's, been, it's been a good run. It's been a great run. There's been some tremendous people there. Our pro staff, uh, our lineup, our pro staff guys are some of the best in the industry. Uh, the service crews on the road, uh, bar none. I mean, just some of the, just literally the best service crews I've ever met. They're always in a good mood. They're, they're always fixing our stuff. And, um, and, and just overall, the people at Evanrude and BRP that I've, that I've come, in, come in contact with and gr uh, grown relationships with and had longtime friendships have just been awesome, awesome people. So I, I'm, I'm, my heart's heavy right now because there's 500 and something people that just literally lost their job, including myself, but I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about, I'm worried about these hardworking men and women that have spent all these years supporting Evanrude and the G2 build and all the different things that we've had going on and uh, and they got that phone call the other day just like I did and uh, it, it, it changed your life and so you know I, I'm really praying for for all of y'all at Evanrude and BRP that that uh, they're having to go in a different direction right now and if there's any of these companies out there that are looking for great mechanics great service crews on the road great pro staff managers you know be sure to uh, reach out to some of these people. There's some really great people needing some really good jobs right now. So, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. Now, what, what am I going to do? What does this mean? Like, so first of all, I, I, I did not know anything. I didn't hear a rumor. I didn't, um, there wasn't any, like, this might happen. I literally was driving home. It's funny because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look, I'm going to remember this day kind of like when 9-11 happened, which is obviously not comparing this to 9-11 in any means, but, you know, a traumatic thing in your life. You know, you can always remember where you are. And I was driving 
back from the coast, actually got my hair cut for the first time in three months, which was a great day. And we went to a restaurant, my wife and I, and, and it was just a great day. First time we've been out of town at a restaurant, first time I've had my hair cut, and I'm driving back and the phone rings and it's like, Evan Rude is officially not making motors anymore. And so my stomach hurt. I mean, my stomach sank, it's like, wow. And so I, I remember calling uh, a couple people at Evan Rude and they were upset. I mean, they were very upset. And they had heard about it just like five minutes before I called them. So it was a, uh, they kept, they, Evan Rude kept this decision very close to their chest. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. I, I don't know if it would have changed anything. You know, it is what it is. But what does it mean? What does it mean for for me? What does it mean for you that that have Evinrude engines on the back of your boat? Well, you know, it, yeah, it sounds awful. It sounds that you know, oh my gosh, they're going. You know, they're not going bankrupt. Okay, so that's really good. So it's not a bankruptcy thing. It's not a financial thing. BRP is financially strong. It's not a financial thing. BRP is a good company. They're going to take care of their customers. I know that. So you know, as shocking as it was, and as scary as it was, sitting here and I and I have quite a few Evan Rude motors sitting on the back of boats right now. And you know, my first reaction was like, what am I going to do? What are these things worth? What, what, you know, what does this mean? And you know, after the, the shock and awe of the whole thing calms down, I start to realize that we're going to be fine. You know, they're not building motors anymore. Okay. That's a fact. The other fact is they're going to service the motors. So if you have warranty, if it's a five-year warranty, a seven-year warranty, a 10-year warranty, they're going to cover your motor just like they were going to cover it if they were in business. They're still going to build parts. They're still going to service the dealers that work on them. Uh, matter of fact, we're a dealer ourselves here in Cluiston. We're an Evernew dealer. Um, and so we're going to have parts. And so if anybody needs a warranty issue taken care of, we're going to be able to service you along with all the other dealers around the country. What does it mean when your engine's out of warranty? It means that you just go to the dealer and you're going to have to buy parts for it. Just like if you had a Johnson motor, you know, Johnson's was the other brand that they had. Johnson Motors uh, is a brand that, that Evernude had forever. It was Evernude Johnson. And so there's tons of Johnson still out there. And if you have a problem, you just, you get a part for it, you know? So that's where we're at, you know? There's, there's gonna be, there's gonna be service for the motors. There's gonna be parts available for the motors. It just really, all it means is that there's just no new motors being built. So if you wanna buy a brand new motor, you're gonna have to go buy it from a dealer. I'm sure you're gonna be able to get a pretty good deal on one right now. So what a great opportunity to repower your boat uh, with something that you can probably get a, a decent deal on. You know, I, I would imagine you would get some fairly good deals. But service is going to be fine. Now, service on the road, this is where it gets a little complicated and scary for us tournament anglers. I don't think, and this isn't, a, again, directly from Evan Rude, but I know that pretty much everybody's been laid off. And I've heard the service crew guys have been laid off as well. Again, I'm not, that's not fact, but I heard that they were. So I don't think they're gonna have service at the tournaments around the country. So if you've had a service trailer come to uh, a Bassmaster event or a MLF event or an FLW event or maybe a local event around your area, I doubt that's gonna happen anytime soon. That may be something they change. That may be something they decide to resurrect just to get the tours through the rest of the year, which would be great. So if you're listening BRP, uh, throw a little money at the service guys, keep those guys on the road. And that would be a great thing to do, in my opinion. I think you should do that. Uh, get us through the year. I mean, you, you slapped us right in the face with this news right off the bat. So step up to the plate and get the service crews out on the road. Those guys need jobs as well. So uh, that would be a great thing. It would be a peace of mind for us anglers that are not knowing really what to do. So as of right now, uh, you know, as far as I look at it, as I'm not going to have any service. Now, the great thing is about Evanrood is that they've, They've really dialed in the engine. You know, it's it's unfortunate this happened, and, and we'll get into the why I think this happened in a minute. But it's unfortunate it did. But they really have a, a great a great platform right now. I, I I feel comfortable with the motor. It's not like they're having mass issues with power heads or you know any mechanical issues across the board. It's just there was other issues that caused this this complete shutdown. But so I'm not worried about the motor. I'm more worried about me hitting something, knocking a lower unit off. Um, you know, maybe maybe an injector goes out, maybe a, a, a plug. I'm, I, you know, you know, what, what do you do when you're on the road and you have maybe have a fouled plug? Uh, obviously, I can change it, but I guess I'm gonna have to get a few extra little parts and carry them on the road with me until I can figure out what to do. You know, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. You know, I've been talking to everybody on the team. I've, I've talked to Jacob Wheeler and Matt Airy and. And a, and a bunch of us and you know we're all concerned about what to do going forward and I think everybody's gonna end up making their own decisions you know I, and I don't think anybody can fault anybody for anything that they do at this point because 
really we don't have a lot of information. You know, I haven't had any direct communication with the marketing team or any of the, t uh, the corporate uh, people at, at BRP yet as far as what we should do going forward for this uh, remainder of the season. But, um, you know, why did this happen? Why did this happen? I, I don't know. I really, I really don't know. I mean, I, you know, from reading their article on the, online, which is I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, but just reading the articles online that the COVID-19 was kind of the, the main reason that this kind of happened. And they had some declining market share kind of going on the last three or four years. And so the declining market share and the COVID-19 shutdowns really, uh, you know, for lack of better words, was a nail in the coffin on it because it just, you know, they had to shut the plants down. You know, there was a backup on parts and getting things in. I'm sure it was just a complete mess like it is for many, many companies out there. So I think that's really what happened. You know, declining market share, you know, it's tough. You know, I, th I think, um, I think, you know, the two truck technology is strong. It's powerful. It, it's, it, it's, it's good technology. But the four-stroke world is is here to stay, right? You know, like out of ten years ago, we, I don't think anybody knew what four-stroke would become ten years ago. You know, was four-stroke when they first came out was a little heavy, a little slow, not a lot of torque. And since then, they've improved the four-stroke technology across the board. All the brands have, of course. So, you know, I think that's that's uh, that's part of it, obviously. And um, you know, but but it, it's a good platform. You know, it's it's unfortunate. You know, when you've spent your entire career with a with a brand, uh, I've been loyal to the brand, um, and so I can hang my hat high, guys. You know, it's it's been a it's been an awesome ride. Again, I've met so many great people. Uh, what an awesome opportunity uh, for Evanru to step up to the plate like they did so many years ago to give me an opportunity to become the angler that I've become. Because without that support, without the support that they gave me and these other anglers, we might not be sitting here today. You know, it, it's, it's, it's so thank you very much, Evan Rood and BRP for providing that opportunity for me and my family over the years. It's truly an amazing ride. So what does that mean for me? Everybody's been asking me, you know, what are you gonna do? What are you, what are you gonna run? You're gonna run market? This is where I need your advice, right? So at some point, I'm gonna have to run a different motor, obviously, can't even get another Evan Rood. So that's, um, that's not an option. So I'm gonna have to run a different brand of motor. And, and you know, there, there's, I really feel like all the motor brands right now are solid, right? I mean, there's no major issues that I'm aware of at Mercury. There's no major issues at Suzuki. There's no major issues at Yamaha. And I'm not sure what other outboard choices you have out there in the grand scheme of things, but those are probably your three big players, you know, and, and they're all running good. I, I haven't heard of any major issues. So I think it really is going to boil down to, to um, you know, resale. It's going to boil down to dependability. It's going to boil down to um, what's the best fit for me across the board because not only – Am I going to obviously be doing the bass stuff and all the bass tournaments and traveling around the country? I need, I need an engine that's dependable. I need support. But I'm also going to be doing a lot of saltwater. Saltwater from everything from the flats fishing to bay fishing to offshore, of course, in the Freeman on the vice versa. So, you know, we're, we, we've got a wide range of things that we're going to be doing. And so I need a motor that is going to complement me in a wide range of these of these adventures, you know, everything from freshwater to saltwater and everything in between. So, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to spend a lot of time looking. And so I, I would love your opinion, guys. Uh, you know, there's a lot of super, super smart people watching this video that have a lot of great insight on these different brands. Right. There's a lot of people that know the ins and outs of Mercury, the ins and outs of Yamaha and the ins and outs of Suzuki. What do you think? would be a good fit for the Scott Martin challenge and, and everything that we've got going on. You know, we've got a little time, obviously it's a, the, the, the way that this thing all hit, you know, I, I don't think there's much opportunity for big budgets and all that, uh, uh, going forward for the rest of the year, at least, you know, with all the COVID stuff going on and everything abbreviated this year. So I'm going to have some time to kind of mull it over, but I want to make a good decision. I want to make a good decision and I want to be an asset to whoever that company is. So I would love to hear your opinions and why. And I don't want to, I don't want to have anybody bashing other brands, right? I don't want this post to be that if you say something about a Mercury, the next guy jumps on there that loves Yamaha and bashes the guy. Just, just tell me what you think. I would love to hear some great uh, opinions from you. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if I covered everything in, in this video or if I gave you the information that, that maybe you were seeking here. But, but again, I do know for a fact that they're going to continue to warranty the motors. They're going to continue to um, supply parts to the dealer networks. And so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's, it's business as usual other than 
they're just not going to build a new motor. There's not going to be a 2021 motor. Okay, so if you have a 2020 or 2019 or whatever year you have, you're going to be able to get parts. You're going to be able to get warranty. You're going to be able to get service. Uh, so all's good there. You're just going to have to ride it out. And you know, hey, it, it's it's a good motor. It's going to last. It's still going to have some value. And uh, at the end of the day, if it pushes you up and down the lake so you can catch some bass or pushes you up and down the ocean to catch some nice saltwater fish, it's a good day on the water. So that being said, guys, I appreciate all the support. So guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like the video and share the video. And again, if you guys want a vice versa hat, uh, drop a comment down below. We're going to be picking out, picking out a winner here to win one of these really cool ones right here. And again, merch drop Tuesday, this Tuesday, 12 o'clock. That would be June 2nd, 2020. In case you're watching this video like a year from now and it happens to be Tuesday in a few days, you're going on the website thinking, where's the merch drop? So that is June 2nd, 2020. Fellas, thank you for your time. Love you very much. And we will see you soon. Bassmaster Open is about to get going. And I'm excited about that, boys. We'll see you.